Well, good morning, my dear GCI family. And here we are once again trying to do worship in this very complicated manner in these complicated times of pandemic and lockdowns. What a pleasure it is to see so many of you. It's uh, so refreshing to speak to smiling faces rather than a screen, you know. <laughs> but uh, we do have uh, several who are joining us on Zoom, so I can't see them at this moment on, uh, on the screen, but I uh, want to wish you all, I suppose I should wave at the camera. Uh, <laughs> welcome to all of you in Zoom land. Thank you for joining us, and of course, certainly thank you all for those of you who are here uh, joining physically. We are continuing to face some challenges uh, with regards to the technicalities. We hope that as we go along, it would become much, much more smoother so we can <clears throat> do it without any glitches in, the, in, in this manner. But I'm just hoping that uh, the quality is okay in terms of voice and video. And I can see many of you quite clearly. It's just wonderful uh, to be able to know that we are all connected in one way or the other. For the message today, of course, we uh, f are going to do a, s a short study on the scripture that was read to us. And I'm sure you, as you reflect upon the scripture that was read from the Gospel of Matthew by Mr. Sikinda, uh, first, the, f the first reaction perhaps would be that uh, it's very comforting to know this invitation that we are being given by Jesus Christ who says, come to me. And to know that we struggle with uh, the burdens of life, the, the heavy laden issues that many times dog us. We are being told that it will be lightened for us. We are being told that it will be in one sense of the other taken away in the right time or at least be given the strength to be able to carry them. And um, many occasions I read the scripture and I find it extremely inspiring to know that we have a savior who uh, is there to carry those burdens for us. But I want to focus uh, a little bit more deeply on the scripture and uh, notice the, uh, the, the nature of this particular thought that Jesus Christ brings. And to me, today I want to focus more on the uniqueness of this particular scripture in the sense that it brings out the uniqueness of our Christian faith. Uh, it definitely gives us the nature of reality when Christ says, come to me. And obviously, like I said earlier, it gives us the greatest hope in all of life's circumstances. But there is something very unique when Christ says, come to me. And that is how I would like to title this message, come to me. And that brings out and takes Christianity away from uh, most other philosophies and ways of beliefs and thinking. And hopefully I can bring that to our attention today. Now, of course, whenever you read a scripture like this, you have to look at the context. And Matthew chapter 11, from where we have read the scripture, if you go back to verse 1, the context is set with regards to the ministry of John the Baptist. And uh, here the author is setting the stage as to what was the purpose for the ministry of John the Baptist. Because John himself was getting confused. 
as he was preaching and he was saying that there is a greater one to follow at one time he started getting doubts in his mind especially when he was arrested because of the you know his preaching and the way he confronted people he was put in prison and he wondered to himself am i doing right am i preaching what is right is this the person that i baptized is he really the one so he got confused and so he asked some of his followers to say to to go to jesus obviously it was he was referring to jesus ask him confirm with him is he really the messiah and of course you remember i won't take the time to read but jesus points to the work he is you know uh, has been doing and brings this confirmation i'll just read you a portion of it from verse 4 jesus replied go back he says to the people who came to inquire of him go back and report to john what you hear and see the blind receive sight the lame walk those who have leprosy are cleansed the deaf hear the dead are raised and the good news is proclaimed to the poor and verse 6 is crucial blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me so jesus is confirming there is no doubts about the fact as to the ministry of john the baptist he is confirming his ministry which pointed to the one to follow and that was the messiah and it was him jesus himself and of course jesus goes on to praise john he praises him for his ministry and he uses words that are extremely superlative saying there is no greater man you know like john and he also clarifies that john was only to prepare the way for the messiah uh he was compared to elijah who was the prophesied person to indeed uh you know prepare the way for the messiah to come and now the messiah had come so that is basically the context but in all of this i think the crucial point which connects to the scripture that we are going to study today is this one which i read in verse 6 blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me right i believe that is one of the most important context or aspects of the context uh for these for this passage in the scriptures so let's go to the text itself right in verse 28 as we were read to us come to me jesus says all of you who are weary and burdened and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and humble in heart you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light did you notice how many times that personal pronoun is used me i right my me right my constant repetition of this personal uh aspect the person of jesus is being highlighted the person is being elevated right and don't you think it's an extremely bold statement for anyone to make <laughs> a person to say come to me and i will give you what you most desire i mean not very many can really do that and say that it has to be i mean it can be very offensive to anyone and it, indeed it was offensive to his audience especially the religious leadership and even today this is an offensive statement i was just watching some uh, you know talks that people give and they talk about jesus and when they come to this they keep saying oh you know uh, we don't believe that the truth lies only with one person 
they want to say the truth does not lie with only one book. We have to be liberal. We have to have all these things. Everything points to, you know, the right way or the true way. But Jesus doesn't mince his words. He says, come to me. As though, you know, he is the answer to all the questions of life. Uh, and so some of the people who were there probably responded by saying, who does he think he is? How can he be so, uh, you know, arrogant to say that he is the answer? So uh, let's look at that a little bit more. And that brings in this distinction that I talked about, the uniqueness of the faith that we have decided to follow. You see, the invitation is to a person. And when I say that, I want to make the distinction. The invitation is not to a philosophy. The invitation is not to a bunch of rules and regulations. The invitation is not to rules or to laws or a set of laws. The invitation is not to rituals. And may I say, the invitation is not to a way of life. Ah, that might hit a little hard. Haven't we all the time said Christianity is a way of life? I'm sorry, that's not what Jesus says. Jesus says, I'm not inviting you to a way of life. He also says, the invitation is not to a church. <laughs> Even though the church is the body of Christ. But how many times people go to church and are hurt by the church and lose their faith in Jesus? Can you imagine people who go to church and actually lose their faith in Jesus? What a tragedy. And so Jesus uh, is very categorical by saying that I'm not inviting you to a, to a philosophy or a way of life or a, th or a thought process. Uh, I'm not even inviting you to the church as such. Now, mind my saying that. I have a clarification to make. But the reason I say that is many times people go to church and they don't find Christ. They don't find Christ in church. They don't find Christ-likeness. How sad, how, tr how tragic it would be. You go to church and don't find Christ. So go back to what Jesus said. Come to me, he says, and I, I, not laws and rules and regulations, I will give you rest. My yoke, he talk, he calls it. Learn from me, he says. Rest in him. Rest in me, and I will give you rest. The rest is not found in a philosophy. The rest is not found in a Sabbath law. The rest is not found in holy days. The rest is not found in any of those. And that is the uniqueness of the faith that we follow, that we have come to call Christianity. Right? Christianity is not a religion, another religion of rules and of laws. Christianity is not a religion of principles and a way of life. By saying that, I am not by any means minimizing the requirement of rules and regulations and principles and laws and all of those things. Most religions have those. They have excellent laws. They have excellent principles. All you have to do is read some of the holy books. And they've got beautiful, you know, rules and regulations. Who can ever say that they are by any means not good? They are excellent. If you read some of the religious texts, they have very good laws and, 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 and principles and, and prescribing a way of life. You see. Uh, 
But Christianity is much, much, much more than all of that. You see, Christianity, the very backbone of it, is a person. It is not a way of life. It is a person. It's the person of Jesus Christ. Take away Christ. Christianity crumbles. You can have the best laws. You can have the best Ten Commandments. You can have the best holy days that mean so much for you. You can have an entire law system. You can have everything prescribed the way you must live from sunrise to sunset. But take away Christ. All your laws are of absolutely no value because Christianity has no legs to stand on without the person that we have come to call Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus says, come to me. Come to me and I will give you rest. It is the person of Jesus where rest is available. He is the embodiment of rest. He is the embodiment of well-being and joy and bliss and happiness. It is all found in a person. Right? It is not found in rules and regulations. It's not found in ways, in a way of life. It is found in a person. And that brings in the uniqueness of the faith that we follow. Now, once again, I said earlier, and I want to reiterate, am I saying you don't need laws? Am I saying you don't need principles? And, uh, uh, you know, a, a, pres a prescription of a way of life? I am not saying that you don't need any of that. What I am saying is, and perhaps this is crucial for us to recognize, what I am saying is, Christ is the law. Jesus Christ is the law for us. He is the principle. He is the way of life. Perhaps I can say he is the life. Right? And that helps me to understand that Christ is above the law. The law exists only because of him. If Christ wasn't there, there would be no law. The law does not have independent existence. That is why Jesus could suspend the law and perform miracles. Do you know what miracles are? We just went through the whole series of miracles. Miracles are basically suspension of natural law. <laughs> right? Jesus Christ could suspend law and perform miracles. That is why he's above the law. And for us, he is the law, right? That is why Jesus Christ could reinterpret the law, help us to understand the law in its deepest meaning, in its truest intent. He could change the law, the written law I'm talking about. And that is the reason why we constantly say, as it is written in the scriptures, he is the fulfillment of the law. You know, this makes a lot of meaning to me. Because we always struggle with this. What is this fulfillment of the law? Christ is the ful fulfillment of the law because he is the law. It is in him that the law emanates. Right? So having said all of that, you know, I want to move to another very important aspect of our faith. Because when Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest, he's saying, you can find grace in me. And you know, grace is a big word in the Christian faith. You know, we, we talk about grace so much of the time. And that is so meaningful for us because we know that we are saved by grace. There is no salvation without the grace of God. And 
The apostle reminds us, writing to Timothy, he says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, he has saved us and called us to holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. His own purpose and grace. Who does the grace belong to? Jesus. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus. I want you to now to focus what is this grace all about? And where is this laws that we talk, talked about, right? This grace was given us to us in, G, in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. And so, very clearly we can understand that our salvation is in God's grace. Our salvation is in God's grace. In other words, grace can be found only in a person. To reiterate that or maybe put it in a slightly different way, grace cannot be found in law. Grace, there is no grace in law. Does that shock you? We talk, we talk about the laws a lot, right? But there is no grace there. The law is not gracious. The law will exact its its consequence if you break it. What I'm trying to say is there is no life in the law. But there is life in Jesus. And that is why we have grace only in a person. We are justified by grace, not by the law. Even as Romans chapter 6 tells us, for sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. And what I want to really say is, Grace is in a person, and that is the person of Jesus Christ our Lord. And now connect, up, connect that to what he has been saying all the time, come to me, the scripture that we read. Why does he say come to me and not to the law? Because it is only he who can provide grace for us. Some of you remember or might have read some books by a uh, well-known Christian author called Max Lucado and he says something very interesting about grace and he says the following grace is everything Jesus grace lives because he does works because he works and matters because he matters to be saved by grace is to be saved by him not by an idea not by a doctrine, not by a creed or a church membership, but by Jesus himself, who will sweep into heaven anyone who so much as gives him the nod. Thought that was uh, very, very well put. John, the Gospel of John tells us in chapter 1, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Grace is in a person. Grace is a person, perhaps, if you can put it that way. Uh, I'll, I'll proceed. I'll just tell you what the video contained. It's basically, you've probably seen a little bit of that. You find this young girl coming into court, and you have the judge sitting there. And she's very nervous. She comes to court because she has uh, broken the law. And uh, uh, the judge uh, tries to calm her down. And then she, he asks her to explain what is the d misdemeanor that she has been charged on. And uh, apparently she had parked her car in the wrong place several times. And uh, the entire penalty for uh, doing that on, the, on, on so many occasions was a hef hefty sum of $200. I mean, this, is, this happened in the US, so it, that was a huge amount of money. And uh, so the judge, you know, reads out the penalty that she has to pay, $200. And she is, uh, you know, a young girl, uh, actually a single mother. And uh, she obviously finds it very difficult to pay the penalty. 
And the judge understands that, recognizes that. And talking to her, he finds out about the fact that, you know, she was not able to find parking. Uh, she was wanting to get whatever little registration that was necessary so that parking would be free. Uh, and then she's struggling to take care of her child. Uh, and then the judge listens to all of that and then says, I know that it is going to be difficult for you to pay the penalty. And this judge says, you know what? I'm going to reduce your uh, penalty to, from $200 to $25. And, and it says, and that not only that, I know you have a little child to take care of and you're between jobs. There is a fund I have. I will use that fund to pay off this $25. And then he says, not only that, I got an extra bit of money. I know that you need money to go feed your child. Here's $50. Take, go and feed your child. She's shocked. This is a true story. She's shocked. She breaks down. I mean, she chokes. And she's so thankful to the judge. And uh, the judge says, how do you feel? She says, oh, I can't describe how I feel. But there's one thing I will always remember, that whenever I have an opportunity to help, I will help others, just as I have been helped today. I, I bring that story to highlight something very important. You know, she broke the law. The law was broken. The law condemned her to a $200 fine, which is a, a fairly large sum of money for a person like her. But who showed grace to this lady? Not the law. It was a person. The person who was sitting there dressed as a judge. You see, because the law cannot show grace, only a person can show grace. And of course, this person goes abo above and beyond in showing grace. Not only that he pardons her, but also provides her with extra cash for her to be able to survive. We come to a person for grace, the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord. That is why Christianity is unique. Christianity is very, very different. And so I would, even though we can term Christianity as a way of life, because that's the way we live, but it is much more than that. I hope you understand that through, the, through what I have been able to uh, uh, tell you within the short space of time. But Christianity ultimately is a relationship. It's a relationship with a person. You can only have a relationship with a person, all right? Uh, I would like to say it a little bit more, as, or slightly differently. It is a union and a relationship. Why do I say it's a union and a relationship? Because unless Jesus Christ came in the incarnation and united himself with our humanity, taking on flesh, our flesh. You, it's only in that union we can have a relationship. We cannot have a relationship without that sense of union that Jesus Christ made with us because he is spirit and we are human. But he, you know, uh, came into our humanity. That is what makes it unique. And that is why it, our faith is unique. Our faith is in a person who is the embodiment of everything. Our way of life, our principles, our rules, our regulations. Everything comes out of this one person. He prescribes the way how we live. But it is in him that we are able to do that. So I go back and say, yes, many, many religions have extremely good laws. Very good principles. They, you cannot fault, find fault with some of the wonderful principles in many religions in their holy texts. They have very, very many noble precepts. And a lot of them work very well for a successful life. 
you know you follow those principles and you can be successful here on this earth but death cannot be defeated by laws death cannot be defeated by principles rules and regulations do not defeat death we believe that it is a person and it is the person of Jesus Christ that death has finally met its defeat come to me jesus says and i will give you rest right uh he invites everyone to himself and all are invited nobody is left out all of us are weary and burdened is there anyone who is not having the you know the burdens of life sometimes the burdens are increased because of rules and regulations <laughs> just like the pharisees did upon the his their followers they put burden upon burden by multiplying the rules that they had to follow some people are burdened by so many rituals they have to perform but jesus said when you come to me your burden is light i will carry your your yoke for you and there is no place that is more safe than in the person of christ our lord one of the church fathers his name is augustine you must have heard of him he is normally called augustine of hippo and he he made a very interesting statement he said thou hast made us for thyself o lord and our heart is restless until it finds its rest in thee our hearts are restless until it finds its rest in thee only in jesus christ is true rest found christianity is different it's different not because it has some special laws it's different not because it has some special rules and regulations it's different because of a person that person is jesus christ our lord and that is why he is indeed the fulfillment of the law god bless you